The other day, I did a review for the new Precon Commander deck, Corrupting Influence. Inside that review, I called that Precon the worst Precon I have ever reviewed. Keep in mind that this channel has only been around for about a year. Because of that, I have only reviewed the Precons that have existed since last year. So calling Corrupting Influence the worst Precon I have ever reviewed holds true in that circumstance to my humble reality. If you're new to the channel, keep in mind that the people who subscribe to this channel are generally people who have never played Magic the Gathering before, have no idea about anything about the game. So when they purchase these precons, they purchase them with the intention of never upgrading them. They just buy them, play them, and then they're done. When we take a look at this commander deck, a lot of the fault that I had with this commander deck had to do with the creatures. We're just going to take a look at Blight Mamba as the example today, but there are plenty of other creatures that fit the bill inside this precon that are going to express what I'm going to express right now. I think that when you're playing a precon as a new player, what you're looking to do, or at least what I'm looking to see as somebody who's played the game when I see a new person, I want them to play cards with meaning where I want them to be able to think about what they're doing so that they can accomplish a goal. And when I take a look at these cards over here, what specifically, you know, cards like Blight Mamba, why is it important for them to play Blight Mamba? Sure, Blight Mamba has Infect and it's going to give Ixhel her corrupted ability, which is going to allow you to take cards and give you card advantage. But a 1-1 one -one on a board with a bunch of with just a 2-2 two -two, or just even other 1-1s one -ones will most likely put you in a position where people will just trade with it. So how do you follow the strategy that it seems Wizards was attempting to create here, where they added cards like Ghostly Prison, Norn's Decree, the Windborn Muse? How do we benefit off of keeping these cards inside the deck and making Blight Mamba purposeful? What I would do in upgrading this commander deck is this. I would find cards that increase the toughness of my creatures. So just as an example, this stone skin over here says enchanted creature gets plus zero plus 10. Okay, for three mana. I could then place that card onto my Blight Mamba, making my Blight Mamba a 111, for example, right? Now, suddenly, I have a huge blocker on my side of the board, right? The reason why we're playing Ghostly Prison and Norn's Decree and Windborn Muse is to keep people from attacking me. Well, let me tell you something. If I have, I think, in my humble opinion, if I have a 111 on my side of the board with Infect, people are not going to want to attack me because I just have enough toughness to block almost anything in the game so and we don't need to be that exaggerated having a 111 on the board sometimes a 15 a 14 is enough there are plenty of cards that we see over here that increase the toughness of your own creatures specifically these cards over here the umbras that give our creature plus zero plus two and totem armor so it actually gives our creatures the ability to to stay on the board, right? Because because of totem armor, if our creature is destroyed, the totem or the enchantment goes away instead. And more importantly, which is why I think this is incredibly strong, is because the tree folk Umbra over here says, and this creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So when we take a look at our commander deck, imagining, right, that we had our Blight Mamba over here and our Blight Mamba was a 111, right? Or even if our Blight Mamba just gained that one enchantment and gained plus zero, plus two. Now he's a 1-3 that deals three infect damage, okay? 
we can equip that same enchantment to our commander Ixhel, and now Ixhel becomes a 2-7 that deals 7 damage, right? And in combination with the cards inside the deck that give Infect, now we have our commander who's just going to deal 7 damage with Infect damage, which is only 3 away from knocking one person out of the game, and at the same time, you gain the ability to still have the opportunity to increase the toughness of all the creatures you control, right? Because we have cards like Builder's Blessing over here, which says untapped creatures you control get plus zero, plus two, which is increasing the toughness of all of our creatures. And there are plenty of enchantments out there that increase the toughness or creatures potentially that increase the toughness of all of your own creatures so that you buff right so that when you take a look at your creatures you buff this one one well now this one one's a one four right this one one's a one four and at the same time you can play cards that make its toughness its damage so now that's four flying infect damage right this is four more infect damage right and now that we have this going on where now suddenly the one one that we had is a legitimate is a legitimate threat on the board right where now we can take this creature and deal much more infect damage than we were able to do in the past so keeping all of that in mind i find that adding cards that focus on toughness allows you to play the deck in a way where you can play more defensively and at the same time playing a card you can take all of that defense and turn it into offense and on the topic of offense we have cards over here like duelist heritage i think duelist heritage is a great card for the deck this is just one example however you can find many cards that do the same thing because Duelist Heritage gives Double Strike. Now, because Duelist Heritage gives Double Strike to one creature during every single turn, essentially when you're attacking with your creatures or specifically your commander, when we take a look at this card, our commander has Toxic 2, which means that whenever our commander deals combat damage, that person gains two poison counters. Well, now if our commander has Double Strike, that's essentially Toxic 4 every time they deal damage. And all of our other creatures that have toxic whatever amount, toxic three, right? All this needs to do is deal damage and now they have six poison counters, right? So the understanding where I'm saying where like double strike is a straight up buff to toxic because now people are taking more toxic damage or getting more poison counters if you get them to 10, they lose the game. Then just to one shot people and win the game, we can play cards like Audric Lunark Marshall, which is essentially going to give if we have our commander in play is going to give all of our creatures flying and vigilance. So now the creatures that we buffed their toughness that are dealing damage equal to their toughness now have evasion and vigilance so they can still block. So when we one shot somebody with our creatures, we still have our board of creatures with high toughness to defend our life total to then just aim it at the next person the next turn. Right. So to me, this is how I would play this commander deck. I haven't created an entire list of all the cards specifically. This video is just here so that I can demonstrate the idea to all of you. And then you can go out and create your own thing. If you would like for me to make a video like that, you can let me know by commenting in the comment section below. And we can really dive deep into that type of strategy for this commander deck. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Always keep in mind, eat healthy or as healthy as you can. Okay, work out every single day, even if it's just for five minutes. And most importantly, you got to believe in yourself, right? Peace out, people.